Hello, folks. Good morning. Good. We'll hold for a few more minutes to be able to pull everybody in here. I'm not seeing all of our folks in yet. No problem. And Amy, as I told you, I don't have slides, but I have a two pager. Um, yeah, we can figure out how to be able to distribute that because it's a little hard to be able to screen share for like a two pager. So, um, uh, how about this? We'll let you go ahead and like kind of do your um, presentation. Sure. Yeah. Those, and then we can follow up from there. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. And if you want, I can definitely screen share my like my screen with the two pager, but I'm happy to go with nothing as well. Let's, let's let's roll with like the being able to keep things together because we've got a lot of other things in the agenda a day so cool no problemo um i'm holding for liz who said she'd be joining us today so good fun good stuff all right Ah, got it. I am now seeing Liz is going to be 15 minutes late. So she wants us to start without her, and that's perfectly fine. Um, Yeah, give him a minute to be able to see, like, if we get him wandering in. We're only three minutes in, so. Yeah, and I mean, if you folks, if you want, I can wait till whenever Liz gets No, 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 no. We've got <laughs> no. <laughs> this, this, one, this one takes all the time. No, no, no. All okay. Good. Okay, so you'll tell me when to start talking. Mm -hmm. That'll lead us in. Yeah, seeing a few more folks join, so given it probably like another 30 seconds or so. All right, welcome to your CNCF DOC meeting. Um, it is October 5th. Our normal antitrust policy applies here. Good to see all of you. Meeting logistics, you have made it here. Well done. Um, TOC members are tracked over in the public meeting working doc, but here's our folks. Um, and this is today's agenda today. We've got Priyanka coming in to chat about some cloud native credits, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, we've got all of our tag updates. Largely, what I can see is everyone is prepping for KubeCon, which is pretty great. And then we'll talk about projects applying the move levels. I know there's some conversations about maybe getting in some like other pieces in here. And if we have time for questions, we will absolutely do so. So. With that, Priyanka, I will now hand to you and let you kind of like lead in. So thank you. Yay. Thank you for so much for giving me a time slot here, folks. I really appreciate being in front of the esteemed TOC. Um, so today I thought I'd come here and share a little bit about this program that I've been working on on called Cloud Native Credits. Um, so the idea is that as you all know, all of our projects need some kind of compute resources, CICD resources. Um, and usually what happens is some magnanimous uh, donor offers a free account, offers some credits and projects are on their way. Um, before you know it, things have gone really well and suddenly it's a graduated project in the CNCF. And at that same time, the, the demands on the infrastructure needs get bigger and bigger, and there's lots of stressful conversations and situations where we don't know where the next credit is coming from. Um, on the other side, with for the donors, they have these myriad accounts that are out there, and they mostly have to manage them themselves. Uh, and there can be a lack of transparency into what's going on just because of the fragmentation. So based on what we were seeing as the need in the ecosystem, we created the Cloud Native Credits Program to allow um, interested parties to donate um, 
infrastructure resources for CNCF projects through the CNCF. The value for uh, the donors is that they just have to call us and tell us how they want to do things. For example, um, hey, I've created an account. You can have uh, admin access and let's decide the rules based on which the credits are dispersed. And then please keep us posted with transparency reports. And on the CNCF side, what we would say is that's great, thank you. We also need a technical point of contact and an associated SLA so that our projects could actually benefit from this. Um, at the same time on the project side, it's very similar to the experience many of you have probably already had with the Equinix Metal program where uh, they have been very magnanimous and given us million dollar credits to disperse to anybody who needs it. Um, so think of this as an expansion of that program and a streamlining of things that are already happening. The hope is that this makes our graduated projects even more robust because we will always prioritize them when it comes to dispersing any resources available. Um, I am going to be uh, sharing this program with the community at KubeCon in my keynote. This is by no means a finalized announcement of this is how things stand and always will stand, but rather like, hey, this is a thing. Sign up if you're interested in helping projects out. Um, I have had preliminary conversations with a lot of wonderful uh, vendors, many of which are represented here in the job titles you all hold. So um, there's lots of interest already. So Oracle's reached out. Uh, Cox, uh, Cox Communications, which is actually a telco, but is coming with an edge platform is also getting started, have good conversations going with, um, with um, Cisco, Microsoft, et cetera. Every, I'm talking to everybody and I'm giving everybody the uh, example of Equinix and Google as folks who have been making large scale donations over time. Uh, and I, I'm getting, uh, the, the crowd is very receptive. So, that's kind of the good news. We've paired these donations with some benefits to the donors in terms of like, oh, we'll give you a shout out here or we'll you know, do this kind of blog post or something like that. So I have a detailed list of what we are planning and benefits available as well. Um, if folk, and actually, yeah, I will link to this two pager, which inco incorporates what we've got right now uh, that people can look at and read. Um, you are very, very welcome and encouraged to provide feedback. Please send it to me, um, either Slack, D actually not Slack, D not to me. Sorry, I'm just trying to think what's the best way to do this. I started talking too soon. Um, I think the best move for feedback is to, um, Okay, Amy, I would like your advice here because I want to make sure email, people like email is going more. to be trackable and findable and yeah, being able perfect. to email. Okay, I mean, perfect. Yes, t t telling Amy as well works, but um, there's only one of me and there's one in email inbox that's then searchable and findable. Yes, exactly. And is there like an alias that people could use that would be seen by both you and Ehor? And maybe we could add a hippie, hippie to it. Um, not yet. Like the okay. that's the, that's kind of like not something that exists right now. Um. No problem at all. Okay, in that case, since people will be sending emails, I request you can email me, but also CC um, Hippie Hacker and Ehor. Um, and so, oh, yeah, I mean, public feedback also welcomed. That's fine too. Yes, that's, yeah, the TOC list is fine too. Um, uh, but if you want to reach one on one, me, Hippie, and Nihor are the people working on this every day with support from many others. Um, one thing I want to call out, so just so people know, this program is by no means um, an alternative for the human capital and resources our projects need. So I've had lots of conversations with folks in the Kubernetes community, for example, about the need for um, maintainers, contributors who can come in and take on specific portions of work. Um, and this program is, I, I wouldn't think of it as a, in any way related, quite frankly. Um, and just so you folks know, after I'm done with this, I think uh, KubeCon has pushed this through quite a bit. Uh, my goal for the next KubeCon, because conference driven develop, development, is going to be to build out a program to help um, graduated projects, starting with Kubernetes, I hope that's okay, to um, get more resources of like doers, 
in terms of uh, code contributions. And I'm still just in like very like, you know, sketching it out mode. I got actually really good advice from Dims the other day when I had a lovely lunch with him. Um, and I've talked to Paris a bit. Um, but I, I, right now, this is early stages, is maybe like a rotational fellows program, which is like a one year fellowship that, you know, a select few are uh, like apply to get uh, with, um, with CNCF and they are placed in specific high, high need, high risk, high value areas um, of, let's start with Kubernetes, of Kubernetes. And they, they support the project for a year and then help recruit the next year's fellows, train those, and then it kind of goes in a cycle like that. Uh, and the companies who would be sponsoring these people get, you know, the usual a nice set of marketing benefits. Um, this is like my initial thoughts right now, but I wanted to like put that in here so that you folks know that I'm not only focused on things like credit, et cetera. I truly recognize the importance of um, getting more doers into our projects. Um, yes, I agree, Ricardo. We, we gotta like put the, like structure this in a way that the companies are stoked to be like, oh yeah, I got a fellow and that's like a big deal. Um, so working on it, but uh, expect that one for Valencia. Um, any questions, thoughts? Priyanka, I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> uh, yeah. This question is, what other criteria will be used to prioritize the projects? And uh, what do projects need to provide to CNCF to prove the needs for cloud credits? Sure. So number one, um, this is how far we've gotten. So work in progress. But number one is status uh, level, right? So if you're graduated, you're first in line. The second is a small, a certain percentage of the allocation, the, the donator, the donating comp uh, organization can share like, hey, here's our we love, we would love to contribute to project X, Y, Z, and a certain percentage of their donation can go with that, to be fair to them. Um, and then beyond that, it's it's going to function very much like the uh, Equinix Metal platform right now, where a project sends in, I think you folks do service test request for um and EHOR looks at that and then gives the credit out as much as fast as possible. This is like the current thought process, I would be more than happy to iterate on it with you folks and make it more detailed. Thank you. Absolutely. We're operating a little bit like a startup where it's like, at first I was trying to figure everything out. And then it was really interesting because everything that we figured out, people were like, oh yeah, that doesn't work for me. And so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and so then we started going more iterative and like just talking uh, talking first and then like defining as we go. And that's kind of our plan to continue that way. Any more thoughts, questions? Priyanka, can you talk a little bit more about the execution of this project? I think it's a wonderful idea. I'm just curious. Uh, especially for a large project like Kubernetes, uh, moving infrastructures is non-trivial. Yes, absolutely. And so just getting the credits is likely insufficient. I guess it, it relates to, I guess, your doer's comment. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, absolutely. So I think one, uh, for the large largest project, Kubernetes, uh, I would say that this is a, a nice to have um, in the sense, as you know, they have a big grant from, uh, Google and we are, you know, utilizing that grant quite uh, quite successfully. We're well set up for it, and so I wouldn't want to come in and shake that up. But uh, for example, I heard from Paris that uh, they want to Kubernetes would like to test itself on Alibaba Cloud, right? And they need credits for that. So that's net new, and that can come in through the uh, through the program. I'm actually talking to Mark. Think tonight, yeah. Um, and so for the largest project, which is Kubernetes, which has a very complex infrastructure story, not trying to uh, force port anything. Um, I think this will start with Greenfield uh, first, where you have a net new need for resources, you reach out, or you are, for example, talking to company A about getting credits, as Paris informed me was the case for getting credits from Alibaba, and then we can jump in and help streamline the process. Um, and then a year later or, or so when everybody's more used to it, et cetera, et cetera, um, we can talk about getting 
um, the bigger existing processes into this, if it makes sense. Bob, I will pass to you next. You had a question in chat, but I'm also happy to give you voice as well. Okay. Um, is the technical contact you were talking about earlier going to be like someone from the company or is it going to be like uh, II with Hippie, uh, the person or group that's just going to be there to help enable the projects to actually use those credits once they've been given them? Um, it's, uh, I forget which one you said first. I was going to say former, but then it's like, maybe it's latter. Uh, no, it's going to be a company contact. So Hippie is always, Hippie is part of this project. So he's going to, he's, He's looking at it for sure. In addition, we are going to have, um, if Oracle's giving credits, a technical point of, point of contact or, or and SLA from them and save for any other vendor. Will there, just a quick follow-up. Yes. So will there be any um, support to actually uh, like help the projects use the credits or will that just be going to like the, the technical point of contact as part of the, like the SLA or something? Um, so as of now, then this is, as I said, startup mode, uh, open to change. Uh, as of now, the way I've envisioned it is that we keep it as close to the Equinix metal model as possible, where the project requests resources, gets them, and then, then if they have a problem, they can get help from the technical point of contact. That said, if we see that, oh, everyone's struggling, we have all these credits and everyone's struggling to utilize, um, that's when... Uh, I'll have Hippie help with another project, which would be to determine how can we get, like support usage here, et cetera. Um, I see there's a question from Matt. Have we assessed the gonna... Actually, Matt, if you wanna be able to speak to that, go ahead. Oh, sure, um, I, I was just, you know, in, in looking at what supports open source projects, uh, you know, Yes. Most, you know, you know it's, it, there's a staggering number of projects that use GitHub Actions heavily. Uh, yes. and now that you can run things like Kind within a GitHub Act, within a GitHub Action, um, you know, suddenly <laughs> sure. there's a whole bunch of compute networking everything. Um, I was just curious if that was part of the assessment. That's Yes, very much so. I've been pinging Ehor that, hey, can we include GitHub Actions on the story? And his answer is yes, soon. So, uh, and the reason is uh, we're already, as you said, lots of usage of GitHub Actions going on. Um, the way it seems to be structured from our end is that in addition to Actions, there's a ton of services support that GitHub is offering. And we wanna bring them into this program and definitely give them all the credit they deserve. But I don't think in time for KubeCon is the only thing. Okay. That is next week, no. <laughs> yes, and, and we do. I do agree with you that there's a lot of good stuff happening there. Uh, and they just like, you know, they deserve to be kind of given the appreciation. Um, and I'm just like slowly working on that. that yeah, one of the other aspects of that is sort of the, the, the identification of packages that have known CVEs or security issues mm -hmm. and the automated PRs that just kind of, they do like that. That's another whole slice, I think, of contribution uh, that GitHub's made that really has made the community able to address things that otherwise they might not have the resourcing for. Uh, in individual projects. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, thank you for sharing that. I can kind of, I hadn't, in terms of the credits and offering here, I hadn't thought of the security aspect as being part of it, not because I don't think it should be, but omission rather than anything else. Um, so let me wrap my head around it and uh, kind of, but definitely all for like showcasing the, the um, the value this has brought. So I'll work with Ihor on that if that's okay. All right, quick time check. We are 20 minutes in roughly. Um, any other questions around this one? There was a and comment did... from Paris in the chat. Oh, I missed it. Is it? There? Oh, we've addressed some of that, yes. Oh. The um, moving back towards being able to have more like the Equinix model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But happy to be able to give more voice. Paris, if you want to be able to raise that question for real. No question, just it was just a statement. Okay. Fine. <laughs> yes. Perfect. And and as you know, Paris, uh, I, I don't know if you heard like my before I was talking about how once I kick this off, we while we will have a technical point of contact and SLA and all that, I don't think that's that's gonna solve projects problems basically. And so we're after this program's done for Valencia, 
I'll be aiming for a different program, which is more about the human capital and resources that we all need in the projects. Um, and I'm, I've been just thinking it, it's, it's brainstorm stage in my head right now, but I'm thinking through like a rotational fellows program where people come in for a year, they work on um, they work on like the most needed things and they, you know, the sponsoring company gets like thank yous and kudos and whatnot. Uh, and then they train folks who would take on the rotation next year. Like this is very early stage thinking, but I absolutely agree with you on the need for um, good contributions and con coming into projects we are in high. Uh, we, we absolutely require them. So we'll work on it after, after this one's done. Uh, Priyanka uh, Dims here. So uh, one of uh, the f kind of like frustration we had with this uh, 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 loop of uh, feedback was that we weren't sure whether, um, you know, if we put it in a PR, for example, in CNCF Foundation and, you know, write it down there and there's discussion happening there. Uh, so we know that um, some of the feedback that we are getting in is getting incorporated and which ones are not. Um, so we need some way of like tracking, uh, make sure that we are all on the same page. I remember Bob uh, had a few viewpoints uh, and Paris had a, a few, and I want to be sure that we are including um, everything in the final one that gets rolled out, right? Um, so if we can do something better on that side uh, at this time or next time, that'll be good. Sure. So one thing I want to point out is, no, there's no final. There's no final. It's always iterative. And uh, I think what I would like to get to is um, make make this announcement, have the like paperwork ready to a point where it's, you know, I, I've, I've sought a lot of feedback in conversations and on and on, but not in that in the formal process, because I didn't, I didn't think we had enough to really like, you know, get real value uh, from the comments but i think um now with like now that i've actually lined up some vendors and there's it's it's more real um and i think we can actually get to the point of like oh how will we disperse this credit or that that kind of thing i'm more than oh, happy to kind of get this uh thing started uh, i think give it until so we're doing paper. basically look look for it in november in November, just because by then I think the dust will have settled enough for the feedback to be like really mean, useful for us, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And there's two sides to the story. Like one is what we are asking for. Uh, yeah. As an outreach. Which, yeah. Uh, which feels like there is enough uh, um, meat there. Uh, but like Elena was asking, uh, how do we do things on our side? And we are like, we don't know. We still have to figure out. So that's where most of our questions and like, how are we going to pull this off? How are we going to make sure that, you know, we don't blow the budget, uh, how, you know, in terms of the caps that uh, yes. the uh, different projects. So on the execution side, there's a lot more that needs Agreed. to uh, be worked on. Uh, and so who's going to do the work, what work will be done and how do we ask, uh, you know, what is the feedback loop there? Uh, so, if, so if we can have, a public place where the discussion is happening, that will be really good for the implementation side. Uh, and Perfect. if Hippie can start that off, that will be yes. even better. That's the plan because he's going to be leading that like definition of it. As I told you, we already kind of have like, okay, we'll have like caps, we'll have like, you know, warnings that we send off to people if something's like really out of whack. But you're absolutely right that it needs to be fleshed out. Uh, it was like, it's a marketplace type situation, right? Chicken and egg. And so I got somewhere with, okay, we'll actually be able to get some resources. And then now let's, let's execute it. Just so you know, we'll present something like that is like, I don't want to present a clean slate to you folks for feedback because that's like not very useful. Uh, we'll take a stab at it and we'll like try to run it once uh, in one instance or something and then put it up. And that's why I said like, wait for November. And yes, Hippie will lead the project. Uh Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Priyanka. Absolutely. There is something Matt shared. Um, one of the few conversation people. about um, the uh, supply chain security, GitHub security. So. Ah. Okay. Okay. Good awesome. stuff. Just kind of notes running around about things. So. Um, we're at 25 after, so I'll go ahead and move us on. Um, but thank you so much for coming by. Um, Priyanka, if I can get you to send your two credits to the TOC mailing list, that'd be perfect. Sure thing, will do. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. All right.
Good Ooh. fun. Um, uh, I'm not sure if we've got the tag app delivery folks on the line. I'm gonna give them a chance to be able to kind of come and weigh in. Cause I didn't see any of them come on in the dock and going once, going twice. App delivery. All right. You all are prepping for KubeCon, which is glorious and wonderful. Paris, tag contributor strategy. I know, and my I'm I'm almost we're almost as bad as apps. That's okay. Um, because we, <laughs> There's no we, bad here. I know we are also in the middle of KubeCon, like, oh my gosh, is it really seven days away mode? Um <laughs> uh yeah, I'm gonna I'll put the link to the maintainer circle in both the TOC Slack as well as the maintainer circle Slack and um, so that won't be a placeholder anymore, including the, the Zoom chat here in a second. But um, good news is we actually are trying out our first ever in-person maintainer circle. We've been doing um, a few virtuals over the last uh, over the last year. Um, for instance, we had Jerome from old Docker days come in and do a talk on burnout, um, and we've had several others um, for this on-site KubeCon, we have Jennifer Allman coming in. Jennifer actually has done talks with KubeCon prior. Jennifer is uh, an executive coach among many other things. Um, so she has a, a sort of um, a professional uh, non-engineer vibe, uh, which is cool. And uh, she's gonna be doing a, a discussion on the effective maintainer. Um, just similar to um, what we've all had before, like the effective manager and things like that in, in other industries. But this will be on the effective maintainer. The capacity is 50 people. Um, it is similar to our other virtual shows where we have sort of a, a lesson and then a breakout. And the breakout is interactive between maintainers who talk about um, and share their stories in that one area. Like for instance, one of the sections during the talk is going to be on emotional intelligence. Um, so uh, maintainers will get to talk to other maintainers about things that happen in their life and experiences as they maintain open source software to help them grow to be better maintainers. Um, we're really excited about this. Uh, the, the group also has several other things that we've been producing. Carolyn has been rocking the um, contributors.cncf.io website to make sure that contributors get um, documentation and things that they need bubbled up outside of GitHub repos um, to help all of the projects and all of the maintainers of said projects. Um, we have different kinds of advice documents that have been uploaded to our project template repo in the CNCF org. Uh, if folks want to take a look at that, things like the contributor framework is in there as well, which is an extensive guide to uh, building a contributor base uh, and some really awesome other um, things like that. Uh, in that same breath, we're also looking for more contributors to come help us. There's just so many other documents that we can build out that would help contributors and maintainers alike, uh, as well as advice and guidance that we can build out. Uh, and then I'm also looking for someone else to help me run maintainer circle. Um, and then after KubeCon, we'll get back to a, a virtual maintainer circle schedule. Uh, I would love to have other people come and help us with any of the above. And please spread the word about Maintainer Circle. We are getting the registration out pretty late, but it is a 90 minute session on Thursday. And now I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the link in, in all of the places. Yeah, and if you could drop that into the TOC list too, that would be splendid. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, no, Lovely. thank you. All right, any other notes for tag contributor strategy? And we also have Liz on the line. So Liz, if you wanna run this meeting, I can pass to you too. Uh, no, it's cool. You carry on. I'll, cool. I'm sort of here, but fish, you know. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Questions for tag contributor strategy. All right. Go ahead and move on. Tag network. All right. Well, we'll have a the, our typical intro and deep dive um, next week. Um, that will take people through the activities within the tag. That's good. Um, we've got a couple of projects out for review. Um, 
Cilium and Chaos Mesh. I was just conversing with a Chaos Mesh maintainer um, this week, part of, um, and, and so, 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 part, so, so, um, Harry, um, part of the feedback that they were, or that they were concerned about or wanted to make sure they were on the right side of was the diversity of maintainers. And um, I know this is a random question and kind of an on the spot thing, but part of my, from what I had seen, it looked like they were probably on the right side of, of that concern. Uh, and so Harry, I think you're liaising or, or reviewing on Chaos Mesh. Do you recall, like, is it, do you, like, is this something they need to actively work on from your perspective? I want to try to give them the right guidance and not, not the wrong guidance. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I do work with them, uh, but uh, it's uh, several weeks ago. Uh, I didn't get any feedback um, since then, uh, but the last time we talked, we discussed is that um, they want to, yeah, introduce and to introduce their contributor and maintainer diversity because right now, uh, Every, almost every maintainer, I, I think it's exactly every maintainer from PinCap and their uh, contributor contribution graph is still uh, lacking of uh, enough external contributors. So this is the last conversation we had. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Well, then they're definitely aware of that feedback. <laughs> so that's good. All right, fair enough. Um, the other, other brief announcements, the other activities that we've been having in the TAG, TAG network itself, other than um, the, is voting, and Liz, you may be, you might know, have, be more up to speed. Is, is Cilium still in vote? Or like, so it's- It is still in vote. Okay. Um, so in large part, what we try to be able to do is work on being able to keep everything in vote until we have everything kind of aligned. Um, and in large part, sometimes not everyone is like able to move as quickly as we want to. So okay, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. So not so I guess I just to clarify my language, maybe not in review, but in vote. It yeah. is in voting. Yes. Right. Projects under review means like the things that we're currently reviewing and Cilium is up for an incubation vote. That vote is not yet closed. There. Um of the other activities within the tag is the service mesh working group. So there's um there's been a so last time we were on the call, we mentioned there's a collection of maintainers on service mesh performance that had uh, were working on an IEEE publication, thanks to um, stewardship from the co-chair Ken Owens. Uh, there are 5,000 performance test results that have been collected um, from the Meshery project that implements the service mesh performance spec. And so hopefully um, th or th those are under analysis. And so we'll see, we'll see what those produce. Uh, within the Service Mesh Working Group, there's an initiative called Get Nighthawk, where it's about the Nighthawk load balancer, just a, 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 as a call out within the next time that the Service Mesh Working Group will meet, there'll be a presentation from Jacob, uh, whose last name escapes me, from Google, who works on the adaptive load control portion of Nighthawk. That was kind of an intriguing area. Uh, and that, that presentation will be on October 28th. So and that's it. Those are the new items since last we met. Excellent. Any questions? Anything else we haven't covered from um, chat and things? Yeah, go ahead. Quick, quick, quick reminder. To, um, uh, there's a, a third co-chair for TAG Network, Ed Warnicky, who's just, just coming into that role. So another call out to add. All right, in the interest of time, I guess we'll move on. Um, tag observability. Uh, I'll be quick since we're short on time. Uh, we have recorded a maintainers track talk. It's gonna be at KubeCon, we're pretty excited about it. Um, I'm not giving away much of the talk other than this was really one of my biggest takeaways that I hope people will have. Um, and it's really around uh, our need for a real multidisciplinary set of folks uh, to, to join and contribute at the TAG level um, in order for the TAG to achieve some of its uh, goals. Uh, and so 
Um, I wanted to give a, a small preview. That's that's from the first or second slide of the talk, uh, but that's that, that will be airing virtually. I'll be locally in, in LA uh, and we'll be uh, trying to organize whoever else from the observability space uh, wants to get together uh, for either Q&A after the talk, uh, as well as to organize a, a small meetup as a contact sheet linked. Uh, otherwise, it's been a really quiet couple of weeks. I think everyone's been nose down prepping for next week. Um, and that's it. All right, not hearing any questions, not seeing questions. We can move on to tag runtime. Ricardo, I know you're here. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Okay, so uh, quickly, so I don't have tons of updates, but yeah, so in, in terms of um, projects, uh, containers and runtimes, uh, we reached out to Inclavera containers, uh, basically, uh, project that tackles confidential computing. Uh, they are already in the CNCF sandbox, uh, so they'll be presenting soon, so they're already reply and, and they're gonna put it on the calendar. Uh, on the workload space, uh, K3S came in to our meeting and they had a presentation uh, in terms of other pro the projects in the same space, Qvert, they, are going for incubation. So they're going to have a presentation tomorrow uh, in Alina is actually sponsoring that project. So um, we'll record talk and we'll take it from there. Another project in the workload space is our Mara or our Meta. And this is a project that allows uh, users to run Kubernetes jobs in a multi cluster environment. And they're scheduled to present on October 28th. And then in the edge AI space, we have this project called Acri that uh, applies for Sandbox. is already in Sandbox in the CNCF. And in uh, this uh, project tackles um, connecting edge devices with Kubernetes. Uh, and that's presented in our meeting uh, on Thursday. And finally, in terms of activities in the TAC, uh, we're still working uh, on uh, choosing a logo. Uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting choices uh, posted on the GitHub repo. So we'll hopefully we'll be choosing, choosing that um, in the next month. Uh, there's uh, some activities like with working groups, uh, uh, some folks around the WebAssembly community has or have expressed interest in creating a working group. So that's in progress. There's also interest in creating an edge working group. Um, uh, the folks from the K3S project that presented uh, in our last meeting. So they're also thinking about creating that. And finally, we have uh, sessions in KubeCon North America in China. Uh, in the one in North America, it's going to be in person. So that will that will be me, uh, and I'll be presenting there. And, and that's all for the updates. No, that's excellent. You were not the only ones waiting on logo, but we'd like to get those completed. So thank you. Yep. Questions, comments, anything for tag runtime? All right. Thank you very much. Security, you are up next. Awesome. Um, so three quick updates um, this time around. So the first one is on a new process that we have for tech leads. Um, you know, the community is expanding. We have a lot more activities going on. And so we want to expand the tech lead team. Uh, and we are experimenting with a new idea of having some of these uh, nominations actually come from the community instead of um, the traditional um, process where we just have chairman nominations and then we uh, kind of discuss this with the TOC. Um, so the new, uh, the community nominations, um, how it work, they'll still adhere to the TOC process where, you know, all these have to be again cleared by the chairs and also with the TOC. Um, how it works is that folks in the community can nominate uh, other people that they think would be fit for tech leads um, and provide some justification why. Uh, and it's up for the tech uh, for the, the co-chairs to kind of review them and make sure that uh, those that are nominated 
uh, kind of meet the requirements or have the right um, tools and skill sets to, to be a tech lead. Um, so nominations are now open and they close at the end of the month. Uh, we open it for about a month period. Uh, and more about this process is in this document that we've created on the tech lead proposal process. Uh, another update is we are introducing a community manager. Uh, this is part of the effort to kind of socialize a lot of the different call to actions that are going on. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening during the weekly meeting. meeting. Some of them, are, you know, the signal to noise ratio may not exactly be um, that high. And so we want to kind of grow um, have a community manager that kind of takes like, action items or call for, call for actions and bring them out to the community to solicit more participation. Uh, and part of this is this new role called the community manager, which uh, Raga is kind of leading right now. Um, and part of this is we have a new Twitter account, which will be used to be driving traffic there. Um, and last but not least, we have a Cloud Native Security Con coming out next week. Um, the CTF is going to be Hollywood themed. Um, I, first time I read that, I thought it was um, Halloween themed, but it's Hollywood. Um, it's a hybrid, so half of the sessions are, are going to be in person, half virtual. And we have a lot of people in person and also virtually. Um, so exciting time next week. <laughs> A lovely note from Liz over in chat. Um, great that tag security has such a big community and there's a specific role in community management. So, hey, good fun. Very excited to be able to see all of your things coming up for um, the KubeCon upcoming. Any other questions, comments? All right, seeing nobody else on mute, we will pass to tag storage. Hello. Um... So thanks to uh, uh, Xing for helping uh, so put this, some of this content together today as well. Um, so we've also been prepping for um, KubeCon. Um, in our talk, we're going to be covering off some new content on the cloud native disaster recovery and on the performance and benchmarking. So that's pretty exciting. And we're kind of hoping that will encourage um, more people to, to join and, and participate. Um, in terms of the projects, um, I'll give a quick update here too. So, so Longhorn um, is, uh, the DD is completed and that's currently going through the voting process. Um, uh, TrueBowFS is um, the, 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 the due diligence doc is almost complete. Um, we've been going, we've been sort of going through a number of uh, iterations with the project team. Raffaele has been leading that. I think the last item on there is to, is to verify um, uh, and speak to some of the end users either directly or, or, or via survey um, to, to finish that off. Um, in terms of uh, open EBS, we had a good meeting um, with the team last week, um, <clears throat> there are um, there are two items that we would like to um, that we will uh, uh, reach out to the CNCF uh, legal counsel and we'll CC Amy for um, for uh, visibility um, just to clarify a couple of uh, IP and trademark questions that came up. Um, and then I have a bit of a NASC from the TOC in that um, we would like a little bit of guidance or, or, or perhaps a, a discussion um, in terms of how to evaluate a project that's actually a suite of things. Um, so so in, in the case of um, in the case of open EBS there are, um, a suite of different components, um, some of which offer lots of, you know, a variety of different functionality and, and they have different levels of, of maturity. And 
we'd like a bit of guidance in terms of how to evaluate a project when it's not an individual um, an individual system, but it actually is composed of multiple systems. Um, so, so if maybe somebody from the talk um, would would be able to act maybe as a sponsor or as a liaison for the Open EBS project, um, we could have a we could have a discussion offline, or or perhaps we could have a discussion um, now, depending on you know time frame. We have a few minutes, so happy to be able to hold the floor open. Cool. Um, so, so as as, as background, um, the Open EPS uh, project is is a storage subsystem, and it includes um, three major components. One is a way of managing backend disks within the Kubernetes cluster. The second is um, managing local volumes within a Kubernetes cluster. And the third is um, providing um, some data services to those volumes like, like replication. And they have a number of different engines to do this. Um, one of the sort of question marks that, that we had was that um, the, 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 the project, for example, is, is putting a lot of its effort into some of the, the newer engines um, which are currently in beta, um, although the existing engines are still being um, supported. But you know, we had we had this kind of question as to, you know, do do we recommend a project for um, do we recommend a project for incubation, which kind of implies the production worthiness, when maybe the engines that are being developed and maintained are still in beta. And when we come to speak to end users, for example, um, is it sufficient to speak to end users of one particular type of functionality? Or do we need to get, for example, three end users for each of the engines? Um, and you know, what what would what would be, I guess, sufficient to 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 pass a DB process? I'll hand it over to TOC for comments. Sure. Um, I know that Aaron has had to drop, but um, our, our TOC liaison for storage is Saad. So I'll pass to Saad. And actually, Liz, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering if there's any kind of parallel here to uh, the discussions we had about um, open telemetry and its different you know how it covers logging and metrics and tracing and those were at different levels of maturity i'm not sure if it's a, a, an appropriate parallel to draw but certainly in that case uh, we didn't feel that it was appropriate to kind of hold the project to its kind of you know <laughs> projects are allowed to introduce new features, projects are allowed to kind of have features at different levels of maturity. And so long as that's clearly expressed, you know, so it's very clear to a user whether the part that they're looking at is kind of, well, what, what kind of level of maturity it's at, that that shouldn't necessarily kind of hold back the overall project. Does that make sense? And, and does that, kind of work as a parallel for this case? Um, I, I guess to a certain extent, yes, it does. I think that's that's useful. Um, I think it's more, you know, so in, in terms of parallels, right, there are maybe two aspects here. One, yes, there are different types of functionality and that's and that's fine. So, so my first question is, you know, do we, do we have to get end users using this in production for the different chunks of functionality? Um, because we know, for example, there are a lot of adopters that use Open EPS for just basic local volume management, um, and that's fine. Um, but that you know, but but 
quoting those end users doesn't necessarily mean that it covers sort of the functionality, say, for replicated storage. Um, and therefore, you know, should we should we be getting, say, two sets of end users to 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 validate that? So, so that's the first question. But then the second question is, you know, coming on to to what you're saying. Of course, every project goes through through iterations. Um, but do we, you know, do we do we need to like if there's an old module and a new module, and ninety percent of the effort is going into the new module, should we? Should there be an expectation that the new module is production worthy, or or is it okay if sort of the old module is production worthy and the new module is coming up to speed, for example? Yeah, I think these are really good questions. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a good answer, but just. Uh, brainstorming, I think uh, what I would suggest is try and identify what the happy path or the recommended path for the product is and use that to try and uh, gauge kind of the adoption and the different metrics we're looking for rather than every kind of sub feature that's offered. I don't know if that would help at all in this case. Yeah. All right. It, it sounds like we need. It sounds like we need a little bit more um, discussion. I think it would be. I don't know, sad or maybe um, if if we can get some time with Aaron as well, it might be worth us having um, a separate call to to review this and provide some guidance. Yeah, happy to do that. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it then for me. All right. Any other questions in here? All right, we will wrap up with our um, quick review for projects applying the move levels in here. Um, the change that has come up from last time is Dapper is in public comment, but happy to be able to take feedback on anything else that needs to be up here. Projects applying for graduation with sponsors. Project applying for incubation with sponsors. So, um, the one that I would add to the uh, incubation list is that mm -hmm. I have just recently agreed to sponsor um, Captain. Ah, so we could right. add Captain to that list. I will, this this actually comes from the TOC working doc. So yes, you were on there. That just didn't make it in last night. So perfect. Okay. No worries. No, no that worries. Is, that is a great check. That 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 means like people are actually reading the slides and paying attention. So excellent. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. This is great. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions in here? So I have a little something that I want to bring up as well, which is um, thank you in advance to all the folks who have already responded to this, but I sent out a note to the tag chairs last night about the KubeCon uh, keynote presentation. We are highlighting the tags in the KubeCon keynote presentation. And so my ask to all of you, if you haven't checked your email yet, is, and several of you have already filled it in, is that I sent you a link to a um, Google Slides and just need you to go in and fill in a couple of things for your specific slide for your tag. Um, and if we can do so, sorry about the short timeline, but if we can do so by end of day tomorrow, Wednesday, then we can get a little bit of graphic help to polish these off before our keynote next week. So thank you in advance. Just want to say a very, very quick thank you for that. It's um, it's, it's really brilliant to get a bit more visibility of the tags uh, at the keynote, and, and you know, hopefully that will help us build our communities as well. So, so thank you so much for that opportunity. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it is the tags are so central to the ability for the Cloud Native um, Foundation to function at scale, and the work you all do is amazing. So, yeah, it's totally our pleasure. Nope, that was my last item on the agenda. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're great, because Ricardo kind of like dropped that in earlier, but like the everyone get in there. All right, perfect. Um, any other things that people want to be able to bring up in our last four minutes? 
just going to shout out to Cornelia for taking on that keynote talk and corralling it all as well. So thank you, Cornelia. My pleasure. No, this is great. Thank you. All right, seeing no further questions, I will send everyone back into their days. It's good to see all of you. Okay, bye all. Thanks, bye. Amy. Thank bye. you.